Resentment is a key human motivation, and I would say it's a great teacher. To listen to your resentment is one of the best things you can possibly do. Resentment only means one of two things. It means either, like, shut the hell up, grow up, quit whining, and get on with it. That's one thing it means. Or someone is playing the tyrant to you, might even be you, and you have something to say and do that you should say and do to put it to a stop. And so maybe resentment can show you the pathway to doing that. Like a resentful person wants other people to change. And if you're resentful, then your motivations aren't trustworthy. In fact, they're very, very dark. And what should you do instead? How do you treat your own resentment? I would say, well, Solzhenitsyn, who I'm a great, I'm a great admirer of Solzhenitsyn, his book, The Gulag Archipelago, was one of the things that brought down the Soviet Union. And he said that one man who stopped lying could bring down a tyranny. And, you know, he said that with some authority. And he said when he was in the Gulag camps, you know, meditating on how the hell he got there. And he had a rough life, man. I mean, first of all, he was on the Russian front at the beginning of World War II, and then he was thrown in the Gulag camps. And that was just the beginning of his adventures, man. He had a rough life. And he was in the camps, and he was thinking, what the hell? How did I get here? What's going on? I mean, he had Hitler and Stalin to blame, right? So if you, have, if you need someone to blame, man, Hitler and Stalin, that, that's great. But he... That isn't what he did. He said he meditated for a while once he realized that he might have something to do with, in some strange way, with the way things turned out for him. And he said he went over his life with a fine tooth comb in his memory. He thought, okay, where did I go wrong? But by my own judgment, when there was a path in front of me, when did I take the path that I knew I shouldn't take? Because you all know that, right? You know, sometimes you don't know if what you're doing is good or, or if it's bad. It's just ignorance, you just don't know. But sometimes you bloody well know and you do the thing you know you shouldn't do anyways. That happens a lot. And it, why do you do that? Spite is part of it. Stupidity. There's all sorts of reasons, but you certainly know you do it. So Zhenitsyn thought, okay, well, what would happen if I took responsibility for where I am in this concentration camp? And then I went over my whole life and tried to figure out all the things I did that were wrong by my own estimation that increased the probability that I would get here. And then what would happen if I tried to set them all right now in the present. And that's why he wrote the Gulag Archipelago. And one of the consequences of that, as I said, was it sped the dissolution of the Soviet Empire. So, hey, that's not bad, eh? Like, you make a real confession, you really repent, you, you do your penance, which is writing this book, and you completely change the geopolitical landscape of the world. It's like, and that, that's worth thinking about, because it's not only Solzhenitsyn who did that. Nelson Mandela did something quite similar. It's not so impossible. And so, the idea that what you should do if you're feeling resentful about the nature of being or suffering too much for your own life, let's say, is straighten the damn thing out. Like seriously, try it for a year even. Try it for a week. Try not doing the things you know you shouldn't do. Try not saying the things you know to be false. And just watch what happens. You might as well give it a shot, right? Because you say, well, I'm all in for a year. You know, I'm going to do things right. And then I'll just stand back and I'll kind of watch how things unfold. And maybe I'll reconsider at the end of that year. It's like, try it. Try it. I mean, I would say I've had thousands of letters now from people who are saying, hey, I tried that, you know, and hey, you know, it worked. I read this great line in a T.S. Eliot play called The Cocktail Party. And in it, this woman comes up to a psychiatrist and she says, you know, I'm having a really rough time of it. I'm suffering badly. My life is not going well. And, and then she says, uh, I hope that there's something wrong with me. And the psychiatrist says, what, what the hell do you mean by that? And she says, well, here's how I look at it. There's either something wrong with the world, and I'm just in it, and that's how it is. And then, like, what am I going to do about that? Because it's the whole world. Or maybe I could be fortunate, and there's something wrong with me that's causing all this unnecessary suffering. And if I, w I could just set it right. I could learn, and I could set it right. And so, well, I've been thinking about that for a very long time. And I think, well, if your life isn't going the way it is, you know, you can find someone else to blame, which is pretty convenient for you, and also relatively easy. Or you could think, okay, I don't like life. I don't like the way my life is unfolding. Um, maybe I don't like life in general because it's tragic and, and tainted with evil. How do I know if my judgment is accurate? And the question is, well, have I really done everything I possibly could to set my life straight? Because maybe I shouldn't be judging it 
its quality or the quality of life itself or being itself for that matter if I haven't done everything I possibly could to set my life straight well so there's a there's a task the humility element is it took me a long time to understand why there's religious injunctions supporting humility to even understand what the word really meant in that sort of technical sense and it means something like this it means what you don't know is more important than what you know then then what you don't know can start to be your friend you see people are very defensive about what they know but the thing is you don't know enough and the re you can tell you don't know enough because your life is not what it could be and neither is the life of the people around you you just don't know enough and so what that means is that every time you encounter some evidence that you're ignorant someone points it out you should be happy about that because you think oh you just told me how I'm wrong it's like great like maybe I had to sift through a lot of nonsense to get through the real message that you're telling me but if you could actually tell me some way that I'm wrong and then maybe give me a hint about how to not be wrong like that well then I wouldn't have to be wrong like that anymore that that would be a good thing and you can embark on that adventure by listening to people and if you listen to people they will tell you they'll tell you amazing things if you listen to them and many of those things are little tools that you can put in your toolkit like Batman and then you can go out into the world and use those tools and you don't have to fall blindly into a pit quite as often and so the humility element is well do you want to be right or do you want to be learning and, and, and it's deeper than that it's do you want to be the, the tyrannical king who's already got everything figured out or do you want to be the continually transforming hero or fool for that matter who's getting better all the time and that's actually a choice you know um, it's a deep choice and it's better to be the self transforming fool who's humble enough to make friends with what he or she doesn't know and to listen when people talk and listening is a transformative exercise like if if you listen to the people in your life for example if you actually listen to them They'll tell you what's wrong with them and how to fix it. Than what they want they can't even help it if you start listening because people are so shocked if you actually listen to them that they, they tell you all sorts of things that they might not have even intended to things they don't even know and then you can you can work with that and the other thing that's so interesting you know now and then you have a meaningful conversation right you have a good conversation with somebody you walk away and you think geez you know what we really connected and I know more than I did when I came away from that conversation and during the conversation you're really engrossed in it and that feeling of being engrossed is a feeling of meaning and the feeling of meaning is engendered because you're having a transformative conversation so your brain produces that feeling of meaning for you it says oh yeah this is exactly where you should be right here and now it's it's the right place and time for you and that's a great place to occupy and so a good conversation where people are listening has exactly that nature and the reason it has that nature is because it is in fact transformative it's one of the truisms of, of clinical psychology like if you're a clinical psychologist a huge part of what you do is just listen to people it's like you know they come in they're unhappy and they'd rather not be it's something like that you say well why do you think you might be unhappy and they don't know they have some ideas and they may have to ramble around for like a year before they figure out why they're unhappy they get rid of a bunch of reasons why they thought they were unhappy that are untrue and then you kind of get to the heart of the problem and then you might ask them well if you could have what you wanted so that your life would be okay what would that look like 
then they have to ramble around a bunch about that because they don't really know. But the listening will straighten them out because people think by talking. And in order to think, you have to have someone to listen because it's very hard to think. Hardly anyone can think. And even the people who can think can only think about a limited number of things. But almost everybody can talk. And you can listen to yourself talk. And if someone listens to you, then, well, then you also have a foil for your thoughts, right? Because you can watch the person when you're talking and see if you're boring or see if you're amusing or if you're engrossing all of those things. And So like if you're arguing with your wife, let's say, or your husband, big party is going to want to win. That's stupid because you don't want that. You want to you defeat your wife in an argument. Oh, well, great. Like if she was going to disappear tomorrow, no problem. But like you're going to like live with defeated, miserable her for the next week? That's no good. So you listen and you think, okay, well, here's, here's what, you, what I think you said. And maybe you even make it a little stronger and more elaborated than was the case with the original utterance so that you get the damn argument right. Because you don't want to win. You want to fix the problem. That's the winning. <laughs>